We are about to witness the most cold-blooded endgame queen sacrifice in a grandmaster game from the 1800s the world has ever seen. That's a lot of variables, right? Do you guys know who Carl Schlechter was? Many people do not. I didn't. And then I read up on him. And apparently he was the only person to seriously contend with Emmanuel Lasker in his prime for a world championship match. He was a world championship contender. Can you believe that? Just goes to show if you don't win, you're just erased from history. No one knows who you are. Or not many people, rather. He was winning the match. He needed one more win to secure his victory. And he had a winning position. Then he blundered it to a draw. Then he lost. And the match ended up being tied. Lasker, defending his title, only needed a tie to retain it. And comment down below, do you agree with that rule? Honestly, it does make sense. What does not make sense is deciding a classical world champion in a rapid tie break if the match is tied. If you're contending for a title or if you're trying to steal someone's title, you should have to beat them. To me, that's more logical. I know there's no great way to break ties in chess, but to me, that is more logical that you need to show your opponent up. You need to disrespect him in a way or beat him in a way. Beat him is not a draw. If you hold the title and you tie, you're like, okay, well, you didn't beat me. I'm keeping my title. Makes sense. Comment down below. But let's get into it. Carl Schlechter versus Philip Meitner, a GM versus an IM. Pray for the IM. E4, E5, we get. We get knight f3, knight c6, and we get an Italian. How is this going to go? Okay, so we get a Joko Piano, c3, playing for the center attack. Center attack, he does. E takes d4. Do you guys know what all the possible moves are here? I mean, technically, there's a ton of possible moves, but the book moves are one, to go e5, gain a tempo on the knight. That's a good one. That reminds me of uh, mainline scotch lines. I'm going to do a scotch video on a very uncommon line pretty soon. Upcoming. Stay posted. C takes d4 is a another one. And then you get the true center attack. And then you can castle and you can always gambit the pawn. If your king's not in the center and their king is, bad things will happen to them if they get greedy and take the pawn. But we get the center attack. We get a check. And again... The subsets of variations arise very early in chess. We can get bishop d2, knight c3, knight d2, or king f1. Can't castle and check. Those are the possible variations. We get knight c3. So black takes a pawn. Don't take the knight because it's pinned. You cannot do that. So we get castle. Black's king is in the center. White's king is not in the center. It looks like white's okay whoa it looks like white is losing all his material he's not even going to take the knight back okay so we have a tempo gain on the knight we're attacking the bishop what happens if the bishop takes on b2 well white would just take the bishop back those are snipers yeah i stutter when i record videos like no other i apologize bishop bishop knight pawn caveman chess that's how we're going to describe everything now Reminds me of an Evans Gambit, I was going to say, though. Sometimes this bishop is on a3, preventing castling rights. So we don't get that. We get knight to e5. Finally, he takes the bishop, and black is up a minor piece, except not really. Do you see what white should play? If you said rookie one or queen d4, you are correct. He opts for queen d4, aiming at both knights. The knight can't really guard the other knight, because then you do lose this pawn on g7, and after something like rook to f8, this is no good. King stuck in the center, you have full compensation. I guess you could also go queen f6, but then I guess you could trade queens, rook e1 check. That's a lot of I guesses, but if king f8, bishop h6, you might get one of those infamous rook lift mates. So that would be pretty crazy. And if king d8, bishop g5, pin. Did that make sense? I hope so. f5. Queen takes knight and d6. What squares does going d6 weaken? You might have seen the highlighted e6, but I asked plurality. Square is not square. We can c6 and e6. But e6 is the true weakness because b7 guards c6, right? That's a lot of squares. We get knight to d4 jumping into the center of the board, trying to get to the outposted e6, aim at the queen, maybe get a pass pawn on the 6th rank. I've heard those are good. Castles getting to safety. F3 kicking the knight out. Bishop to g5, finishing development. 
That is a pin. Pins are no fun. And now Black starts going crazy, but apparently he could. Apparently this is not an overextension and everything is, you know, 0-0, zero, zero, equal. Okay, King G7, and now we get Rook to E1 and Queen B3. When I was reviewing this game, do you know why the horrible engine, great engine, whichever way you want to look at it, does not like Queen B3? Take five guesses. Guaranteed no one gets it. And if you do get it, I don't know, not even like, I'm not even impressed, honestly, because the move is king h7. Like, that doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense why that makes queen b3 an inaccuracy. Rook to b1, though, does make more sense. Knight to e6 does make more sense because you are going to double up and your pieces make more sense. So that I could understand, but queen b3 being tied to king h7, mm -mm, don't want to understand that. Okay, c5. Changing the pawn structure, weakening d6, but trying to boot the knight. It is the year 1899. Do you remember what year Ampassant was created? It was in a prior video. We got Ampassant. The rule was around. Okay, knight to e6 check. He takes with the rook, and we get a pretty balanced game. I do like white's chances better, just because I think the bishop has more potential than the knight. Of course, nice knights are tricky, but... Knight d5, blocking the coordination of the rooks to d6. We get a check, king h7, and now white doubles up on the e-file. Don't move your knight now. Move your knight now. Boom. That's bad. For white. For black. Goodbye, white. Okay, we get a rook trade. He didn't want none of that. And now we have an end game where white is down a pawn. But he has the bishop. And black's king is potentially weak. Don't go back. Don't get checkmated in one move. We get queen g7, and yeah, I'd rather play white. Who would you guys rather play here? But, um, you know, I wouldn't rather play white if someone said I need to play the move a3, because then I get checkmated in one move. I'd be sad. So we get h3, creating some room for the king. So black thought. Queen to e6. Now I want you guys to find the idea. The idea is pawn to g4. Making the king move. The king has two moves it could take or it could move. Understandable, he didn't want to move. Try to find the sacrifice. The computer didn't even know it was winning until now. Didn't even see the brilliancy. The move is queen takes h6 check. If king g3, black loses a queen and then gets checkmated. If black decides to take, find the king move. There is only one. The only king move that works is king h2. Right, keep your king diagonal from knights, not to get into checks. If you get into checks, you will be losing because they get out of everything. So king h2, the king cannot move. Pawn takes, you take with the h pawn, saying, where's your discovered check? It's nowhere to be found. And they cannot stop bishop to f2 checkmate. That is insane. That is why the kings are the best piece in the endgame. You could sack a queen... When there's barely any pieces on the board. So, okay, we got F takes G4, H takes G4. And again, King H4, same sacrifice. Queen has to take, and where does the king go? King H2. This is unreal. This is a composition-like checkmate. To be thinking like this in the 1800s, I'm always going to give them massive respect. A beautiful checkmate, a beautiful sacrifice from a balanced game. Schlechter was a beast. They say he was a gentleman at the board, but over the board, he was a savage. And I think this game greatly demonstrated that. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching and have a great day.